Hello, this is Schedulitics and welcome to today's session. If you are new to this channel, we encourage you to subscribe to the channel, turn on the post notification bell so you are always notified whenever a new video comes out. Or some people say when they watch our videos, it's not clear. So this is what you may want to do whenever you launch to the platform. So you come to settings of your YouTube and go to quality. See here, the auto setting is at 208. So you may want to increase it to at to 720 pixels. So it can be clearer for you to be able to see. So as you can see here, you realize that it is a bit clearer. It's a bit clearer for you to see. Now, this particular video talks about how to categorize continuous variable using the SPSS platform. So in today's brief video, we are going to go a step further to look at how we can do the same categorization concepts with data. So if you watch this video right to the very end, you can you would be able to discern or know how to use the data platform to also do this categorization. But mind you, we are going to use the coding or the command window of the data to be able to do this. So please kindly take note of the codes. You can replicate the same ones on your own individual analysis. So in this video, we did categorization such that the age were categorized as you can see in this video. But then the video we are about to, or this current video, then in this current video, we are going to do our categorization from 19 to 30 years, 31 to 50 years, 51 to 70, and then greater than or equal to 71 years. So these are the categorizations we are going to use. So without wasting my time, let's go to this data platform and see how that can be done. All right, so to do that, to so type H apps, we are generating, we we'll first generate a variable called H cats and we'll put it to one if our age, our age is equal to, is less than or equal to 19 and age is greater than, sorry. This one should be greater than or equal to less than or equal to 30. So let's go and see if it has generated that data. So we have each cat over here that generated each cat such that where the age is greater than 19 but less than 30, if you ascribe one to it. So now we have that variable generated already. So now we are going to replace that variable each cat. with two, if h is greater than or equal to 31 and h is less than or equal to 50. Yes, so it was because we replicated this. All right, so we replace each card with that. So now we also replace each card. Replace each card equals three, where we realize that uh, each, if each, if each is greater than or equal to 51, and then each, is less than or equal to 70. And then we we'll replace each cat equals to four if each is greater than equal to 71 and each and H equal to that. 
good. So we are true with it. So now we are going to label our variables. We are going to label our variable each cat each cat with what as each category. category. So you realize that immediately there is each category generated as for the level. Now we also define the level. So label define label define each card to one as what nineteen to thirty. Mm -hmm. As what. 31 53 as what 51 to 70 and 4 as what greater than or equal to 40. Good. So now to ascribe the values to the labels, we have to type this code. Label value values each cat, each cat two. We are true. So now let's let's go to let's tabulate this each cat and see what we have done has been successful. So right away, we have our eight categories developed or generated for us, and then the respective frequencies, and then the percentages have been generated here. So basically, this is how you can be able to categorize a continuous variable using the codes in Stata. So you may want to take note of the codes one by one and see how you go about it. So first of all, you have to generate um, a, vari a variable called what? So you generate a variable called each cat and then ascribe one to it if the first category. Then after that, you replace um, that each cat with two, then the second category, then you replace with three, the third category, and as many categories as you want to have. Then after that, you want to label the variable so you can be able to know what that's. A variable name means. Then you also want to define the labels that you have given to the categories that you have categorized. Then, then now you define, you now ascribe the defined values to the labels. And that is done by this code. Once you are true, you'll be able to have your data or your continuous variables who are categorized. If you find this video useful, we encourage you to subscribe, share, and like. Until we meet again on our next one, say bye.